Hey gang, welcome back to the Corona version of Joe Daddy's Garage. <laughs> hey, check out that mask. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Anyway, let me take this off. This is this is something I had made up from Teespring. If you're interested, they're on Teespring. Um, anyway, welcome back to another video. This is Brooklyn Pony Part 46. If you've been watching and following along, you already know the story of the Brooklyn Pony the 66 Mustang convertible that's being built from mostly Dynacorn parts and some original parts. In the last video, I was test fitting the I did it steering column and the headers after I got the engine in place and the transmission in place with the new cross member that I built for the 4R70W conversion. Now, this video is going to be about mocking up and test fitting and trying to resolve any issues that I may have with the front runner system from Vintage Air. Now this system is pretty cool. If you look at this drawing, if you can see it clearly enough, you know it's gonna have a serpentine belt system, obviously a crank pulley, a belt tensioner, I believe that's the power steering, I think that's AC compressor, alternator, and water pump. So that's what I'm going to attempt to install. I also need to point out that this main piece, this big heavy piece, uh, does not have a provision for a fuel pump. So I'm assuming that there will be some upgrade in the future to an electric fuel pump and maybe an EFI system. I don't know for sure, I just know I have this. This is what I'm installing. So I have to do um, some things to get this on the car. And obviously, if you're familiar with you know what I'm building here, this car has a 347 stroker engine in it that is from Ford Performance and it comes with the front housing where you would normally put on your water pump. That housing has to come off for the big piece to go in from vintage or uh, from vintage air. So <sighs> Let's get started, see if I can't get this swapped out. As I was saying, to put that front runner piece in, I have to remove this timing cover slash water pump housing holder slash fuel pump housing, whatever you want to call this piece, has to come off. And for that to come off, the balancer has to come off. And before I take that off, I want to put the distributor back in. The reason for that is I have it indexed already as I pointed out in a previous video. If you look up here on the valve cover, this piece of tape represents the position of the distributor before I took it out the first time. The reason I want to put it in is if I do manage to turn the engine slightly while I'm taking off the balancer, it could throw off the timing and I'm going to assume that it was timed correctly when they built this engine so I want to put that back in index it towards the tape leave it sit and then move on to taking off the balancer we'll see how smooth this goes <laughs> on the base of the distributor is kind of uh, I guess I don't know what you'd call the shape, if it's truly like an Allen head or not. Uh, I don't know. But I'm going to try to set it back in. And again, index it with my tape. Kind of what I figured. I'm going to have to turn the uh, post that drives it to get it to line up better. Uh, okay, so I took a quarter inch long socket on a quarter inch drive extension, 
I was able to get onto the post and just back that up just a tiny little bit. So there it is, lined up, pointed at the tape. So that takes care of the distributor. Now I'll put on the clamp just because, not that I expect the distributor to jump up or move, but at least that way I know the clamp is in place. Now I can move on. So let me get that wiring out of the way. Note. Let me show you some of the things with these instructions. Of course it's going to give you, you know, a parts list, that sort of thing. It points out important information. Um, just talks about refrigerant, lubrication, service info, stuff like that that'll come into play later. Here it talks about the engine block on 260 or 289, including high performance engines from 62 to 64. There may be an oil fill opening on the engine block that is not covered by the front runner main bracket. See photo one. So it's talking about early model engines if you were going to work on one of those. Um, while it is customer responsibility to determine how to plug or seal the opening, Vintage Air recommends having the opening sealed by an automotive engine machine shop. Be sure there is an oil fill cap in the valve cover for adding oil once the block opening has been sealed. So, I don't see many people using that early block, but they do make a point of that. Now, here, as it goes through the instructions, and I want to point these out because it's important, I guess. Disconnect the negative cable, drain the radiator, drain the oil, remove the fan, all that sort of thing. Here's talking about removing crankshaft pulley and the harmonic balancer. Now it says, note the system is designed to use the stock Ford harmonic balancer before removing the harmonic balancer verified at the dimensions from the face of the block to the machine pulley mounting surface of the balancer is 4.725. 4.725. So, if you can see that, sorry, I'm looking weird at the camera. 4.725, but then it says over here, 4 and 3 quarters. Just pointing this out. 4.725 is not the same as 4 and 3 quarters. That should be 4.750. 3 quarters, 750. Just saying. All right, so four and three quarters measure is shown in figure one, and it's showing using a combination square and another straight edge and, you know, whatever. So I'm going to do that and show you how this turns out. Hopefully we have the same number. I'm going to go with probably four and three quarter. So we'll get a look at that. Okay, so it's talking about the face of the block itself which is right here. You can just see the flat surface where it's painted blue, that little corner sticking out. Okay. Then it says, and it shows in the, in the picture, to take a straight edge, and if you look at how this, how this is drawn, it's a pretty good, whoop, pretty good representation. Combination square running with the length of it making contact with that little space, and this, this straight edge is because you can't measure out in free space. So it's giving you something to reference the face of that pulley. Let me show you. If you were to just take a combination square and set it up against this, you could tilt, you could you know be angled differently. But if you take a straight edge, in this case I have another, uh, the main body of another straight edge, or a combination square, and I put it against the face, and then I put that against and zero things out. So that gives you a straight reference, and then a straight reference with the face of this. And lo and behold, it's right at four 
and three quarters. Four three quarters, or four point seven five zero. <laughs> okay. Anyway, double verify that. Yep. So we're good to go. All right. Now I want to take off the balancer, and that bolt is a fifteen sixteenths. So I'm gonna put that in my impact and. That worked. Big thick washer. Actually has silicone in there. Interesting. So now I'm going to use puller. This is a kit that I've had from, uh, I got it from Mac Tools years and years ago. So I'll give a shout out to my buddy Robbie, who is a Mac Tools distributor. <laughs> See if I can't uh, get this loose. I may want to put a smaller washer in there because the end that I have here, it's a bit on the small side. So I may, I may add a washer in there just to give it more surface area. Now this does have a, a series of holes on the balancer, so you have to make sure you index the three that are going to line up with their puller, uh, because th four of these holes are for the pulley that will go on here, and obviously you're not going to use those unless maybe you had some sort of mystery four job or four sided puller. So. And then you can tune center line by turning the bolts just a little bit one way or another and putting a little more tension to get it centered up and straight. Now on my puller that's a three quarter. Ta-da! So here you can see now, maybe. That's those washers I put on. Um, maybe you can see the whole alignment that I was talking about. It only fits on those three, and then you have the others. So, that's off. Okay, now I'm going to try to get the housing off. I'll point out there's two half inch bolts behind this flange where the water pump mounts 9 sixteenths at these locations the front one near the front of the crank going up is one half inch and the one further back is three eighths of an inch I think they wanted to see if they could use all their different bolt sizes 
in one setup. So I'm going with these 9 16 first. They're actually two different lengths by the looks of it. The upper one is just a little bit shorter than the lower one. Make note of that if you need to. On this side. These two are also two different lengths. So the outer one or lower, outer, lower, however you want to look at it, is longer than the inner one there. Now, let me see. If I can get on these. Get the half inch. There's one. Two. Now the three eighths. There's one. Two. Those come out easy, of course. Now, take the fun, fun part. We'll be getting these two out that are behind the housing. Maybe not too bad. It shouldn't be that long because you don't have any room to uh, install these. Yep, there's one, two. Okay. Now becomes the challenge, I guess. I'm going to try to remove this without breaking any other pan bolts loose. I really don't want to separate any of those if I don't have to. So. You know, it's tough to find a place that you can put some pressure to push against. And it looks like if I, I might, yep, on this side there is the original fuel pump port and there's a gap behind it that I can just get a screwdriver in there. And that popped loose. So the seal broke, but then what? It looks like there's going to be more involved. Get the seal to break loose. I see an issue already. Uh, it's got these little sleeves that are alignment sleeves. This one on this side stayed in the housing. The one on the driver's side wanted to come loose and it did. But uh look at that. Hmm. There's no doesn't look like there's any sealant down there in that pan. I could be wrong. Maybe it doesn't need it, but I think I would have put sealant down there. There's nothing holding that. Interesting. Hopefully the gasket that's underneath that's on the pan. That's, that's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. And of course I'll replace 
the paper gasket behind the housing. I may, I'm going to have to try to leave those gaskets for the pan and see if I can't get this one out of the way. I'll have to look at this a little bit harder because I think that's that maybe one piece, but I have the gasket in the kit is in the, in the kit that comes from Penny Jair. You've got your new paper gasket and this new lower gasket. So, yeah. Oh, and it also comes with <laughs> two little cork sections. So if you wanted to cut these off, apparently you could cut these off to make those work, but I don't think I'm going to need to do that. I'm really just hoping I can get away with replacing this one because of the front runner, well, let's just look at it real quick. Yeah, that's like their own gasket width that fits in there. If I can show you. So it has its, it, it looks pretty specific for that width because the one that's in there is wider. So I'm going to have to use this one regardless. I think I'm going to have to cut that one off, get it out of the way. I take it back, there is silicone down there. There is silicone. Okay. It just came loose really easily whenever I pushed on that housing, so it does have silicone. Boy, if I could trust that, if I could trust that, now that I see it, I think it's the same width. Now that I see it without the silicone on it. I'll have to do some comparison. So I thought I would show you this. I did do a quick test fit to see if I could get this on and I quick, quickly realized that that wasn't going to happen because this is still set up for the fuel pump and that is the on the cam you know the concentric or whatever that actuates the arm on the fuel pump so that's going to have to come off because this one has this internal structure here and if you compare that to the piece I took off this is pretty deep where this makes this part shallow uh, I don't know if there's just be because it's not set up for a fuel pump you know maybe that's just the difference but anyway I have to take off that and I'll just tell you this up front I researched this real quick and from what I found this is 40 foot pounds so I'm going to take this bolt out pull this off reinstall it and torque it to 40 foot pounds so there you can see it has a nice big fat washer on it so that could be a problem alright this is this is gonna make it difficult because there's a guide pin that sticks out here for this to attach to it's what makes it rotate around so uh, I may I may be stuck for a minute because that's not going to work. If I tighten down that washer or tighten down that bolt, it's going to want to press on that pin rather than the face of the upper cam gear or timing gear. Hmm. Let me see if there's something in any of the hardware that might assist. Okay, there's a, probably several different ways to handle this, but I just want to show you the situation. This pin is too long. Probably 
if I was building this engine and taking everything apart, I would get a shorter pin. I don't want to take any of this apart. This is further than I want to go anyway. So if I put the bolt in, um, we realize quickly that the washer that I have is not going to work. It's going to you know, stick up or angle because of that pin. Here's my plan. If I take a measurement using this caliper and I put it against the face of the pin, slide caliper down, make sure everything's square as best I can. I come up with 110, 115 thousandths, something along those lines. I found a washer that I measure it. It's 125, 27, 28, somewhere in that range. 128, let's say, 127. So, because again, I don't want to have to mess with anything internal like that. I'm going to take, and I guess the technical name is eccentric, not concentric. It's eccentric. And if I take this washer, I line it up on that center. Now I can drill that hole and that will give me the pin location and this doesn't take up any more space than what was there to begin with. So that will be my fix. I'm going to make a hole right there and then I'll show you how that fits. So there's the washer. Well, it only took a few minutes to make that. but. That fits the pin, and the bolt. So now I'll just put 40 foot-pounds of torque on that, and that's going to take care of that problem. 40 foot-pounds. Guess what? We have a problem. Surprise. <laughs> All right. You saw me take the other housing off and I pointed out the size of the bolts around the perimeter where they were where it was bolted on. And now that I'm trying to refit the vintage air setup, this is where the problem is. This engine is a Ford performance engine. So they may have modified or changed or upgraded certain things on this engine. The situation is for me to mount <clears throat> for me to mount the front runner setup, it's calling out for these bolts, five sixteenths, coarse thread by two and a half. These bolts are supposed to go in these four holes. Well, guess what? They'll go in, but you don't even have to turn them. The bolts that came out of there were these. 3 8 coarse thread. So I can thread this in, but the bolts that were provided will not work. Let me show you something else. Remember that Windsor block that I've been using? Hopefully I can get enough light on this for you to see. These are the same holes that would be mounting that housing. So if I use the 5 16 it fits fine. So that tells me that there's a difference between, let's say, the original block and the Ford Performance block. There's been some changes made. It only gets better. Hold on. All right, so let me just show you on the instruction sheet. Here's the 
front runner. Calls out for four, five sixteenths, eighteen by two and a half, stainless steel, twelve point bolts. And that's what it calls for. It also tells you down here that due to slight variations in block castings, bolts may bottom out before the bracket is tight. Well, that sounds fun. It may be necessary to trim the bolts by approximately one thread. Well, great. How do you know that? How do you know what you know if that's working or not? You may have to do some pre-installation and do some measuring to see if you're in that situation because you know you're torquing this thing in with a gasket on it and now you're bottomed out in a hole when you think you have torque on it but you're not you're not sealed so that's not cool let me show you this uh, again these are the bolts that held this cover on I find this interesting now again this is straight off the engine uh, there's the bolt hole right and we understand that this is the little timing cover deal it fits on the passenger side and what's interesting about that is there's a this hole is larger because it has this little um, piece sticking out on on the on the hole or on the uh, flange, just kind of an alignment thing to make sure it's centered up in that hole. That's good. That's helpful. However, if I take this and I bring it over to the front runner setup. It also has that recessed hole that this piece aligns in. And that's great. That's what you want. Okay, now here's the bigger dilemma. The bolts that it's calling for, the 5 sixteenths, fit fine in those holes because that's what they expect, I guess, to be there. This, again, is the 3 8 bolt that came out of the engine. So what does that mean? That means these holes are going to have to be enlarged. And then, I need to come up with different bolts because the stainless steel bolts that are provided in the kit don't fit the engine. Mm. Yeah. The other thing is this hole is recessed. So when the bolt is sitting in it, apparently it's going to be, you know, slightly lowered into the hole. I guess because whatever accessory may attach to that area. This one is flush, this one's flush, and this one will be flush because it has that bracket sitting on top of it. Kind of complicated at this point. So I have some decisions to make and I may end up, I don't know if I can find, you know, 12 point stainless steel bolts this is for another part of the build but this is technically what what I need two and a half inch stainless steel three eighths so anyway fun 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 I guess I'm off to solve another problem Okay, I think I have some answers for what needs to happen here. I've talked to my neighbor who is a machinist by trade and he gave me some advice, so I'm going to work with that. I do plan to modify the holes in this front runner setup. And what I plan to do is use hex head captive head bolts, Allen heads instead of the 12 points that they provided. And I wanted to maintain a smaller diameter 
shoulder so that whenever I come over to this hole in particular which has to be recessed it'll fit inside of that so I don't have to modify that shoulder I can leave it alone and just recess the bolt now as I'm doing this the plan is to use this step reamer by chance my neighbor who goes by hindsight 67 on YouTube if you've seen his comments on any of my live streams he had one of these and these holes which are what's in the original piece are uh, I think it's 420 is the size and that's what I'm going to go with I'm going to stick with that size this one here is larger because that's where that shoulder goes on that timing bracket and the guide is almost the perfect size for you know guiding the um, the reamer in so that's what I'm going to do step these up and that'll take care of the holes in this part on to the next section I want to talk about anytime you're doing this take the bolts that you're going to be installing in this case where the oil pan is going to attach or the oil pan bolts clean up the bolts and thread those in make sure that they're going to bottom out like they should because you could end up with some problems like this right here I don't know if that's enough thickness enough length to do what I need but I can take a measurement you know get a rough measurement of how deep that is in this case it's about 388 and I can do a comparison by putting the bolt back up through the hole that's in the pan it's exposed right now and measuring what's exposed on the, the threads and compare that to the overall so you know you get what I'm saying if I measure off whatever X may be uh, and I know I have used up the threads that are or have a, a minimal amount of threads or less threads than what's exposed right here then I'm good to go so you get the idea I'm just implying you need to test fit everything before you start installing with sealant you know because you could run, run into some problems this one comes out at four about 430 so this one was like I said 390 this one's 430 so again check these things if you need to make adjustments you're gonna have to shorten the threads on these bolts the other part I want to point out and it's in the instructions here from vintage air it talks about and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not but I'm gonna bring it up again it talks about due to the slight variations in block castings bolts may bottom out before the crack before the bracket is tight it may be necessary to turn the bolts by approximately one thread okay I get that here's my dilemma and I say dilemma it's not really a dilemma the bolts that I had to buy are not the two and a half inch length that it's calling for in, in the instructions these are actually three which lends me to give a demonstration as to what the, what I want to talk about or show you I'm going to take this bolt which is the standard bolt that would normally work for this situation like uh, as a comparison this 5 16 is two and a half inches long this 3 8 is two and a half inches long but again I only have one of these but I can use it as a reference thread it into the block and do another drop measurement because I don't want to be torquing down this into place and the threads bottom out in the block and I don't know it and I, that, that's kind of a little frustrating that they don't point that out you should measure this stuff because you know if you're putting this all together and you're putting in one of the bolts and it happens to be just half a thread too long or whatever and it bottoms out in the bottom of the block yeah you're going to show torque but you're not going to have compression you're not going to have the you know the squeeze on this block that you need so let me show you what I'm talking about and we'll go into this a little bit further uh, the only other thing that I can see that may be an issue is these little 
guide pin bushings. And I, I may have mentioned this earlier. They go on the back side. And these are supposed to, I mean, they, they just drop in to the recessed holes in this fixture. But there's enough shoulder there that it will align with the uh, recessed holes in the block. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. But it's all I really have to go by. And that's how it's, that's how it's made. Now I could expand these out a little bit and force them into this opening. But what I found is, as they are right now, they fit snug into the block. So it would, it would become a conflict to make them big enough to fit this. I don't know why there's two different dimensions. But anyway, I'm going to go a little further and show you what I was talking about with the bolts and the thickness of this. And just, just to clarify, if I do a measurement, I'll be, a, I'll be ahead of the curve if I measure this now, since I'm right in front of the camera. This comes out at 1 and 13 sixteenths thickness. Hopefully you can see that, 1 and 13 sixteenths. 1 and 13 sixteenths. I could turn it the other way. Maybe that'll help. So that means the bolts need to have a grip length a little bit less than 1 and 13 sixteenths. Because you're going to have a gasket material on the sealant against the block as well. So let's do some measuring and find out what that measurement is. Okay, so I'm talking about these bottom four holes. And this is what would be the correct length, two and a half. I want to thread this in. And I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it, not much. Just so that it's bottomed out completely. And then I can take a measurement. And I know I'm just using a tape measure, but it's a simple way to do it. And I can do a measurement from the block face to the bottom of the bolt head. And in this case, it's right at one and three quarters inches. That's not much of a difference between, you know, the the other one and thirteen sixteenths. So, you know, you're talking a sixteenth of an inch. So what I will probably do is take the new bolts. I'll take the new bolts that I bought, and I'll trim those down to where it's just a little bit under the length of this bolt. So I know this is two and a half. I'm going to make it a sixteenth less just so I know I've got room to get into that block. I'm hoping this is making sense. I'm trying not to overcomplicate things. But the bottom bolts or the bottom bolt holes allow for more space. So if I take these and run them all the way in, put a little bit of pressure on, measure it off, this one is right at an inch and a half. That's plenty of room in comparison. So I don't need to worry, I mean I still need to make it shorten up you know, my new bolts that I bought, but I can make them exactly two and a half or just a hair under. I think that's going to remedy the bolt situation and all I need to do now is upsize the holes in the aluminum front runner setup and I'm just about ready to start putting this back together okay so as I said I'm going to go a little bit less than two and a half so I have maybe a thread less than what this bolt has on it and I'm going to mark that on one of the new bolts, cut that off and that's going to give me a length that I need.
So now I'll just take my sanding disc and clean up that end and then chamfer that first thread so it'll turn in easily. I'll repeat this with the other two bolts or the three bolts and then that'll take care of the bolt issue. That'll work. Okay, so I have these bolts in, have a little bit of tension on them, and this measurement is now inch and 11 sixteenths. So I was trying to stay under inch and three quarters, and that's what I've done. So inch and 11 sixteenths, inch and 11 sixteenths. So I'm gonna call that good. Now, to enlarge the holes in the front runner plate. Okay, I've done one hole and it fits the bolt very nicely now. Just like it fits on the original piece that came with the car, so I'm going to step up the other ones. And as you can see, I have this on a bench or on my uh, table here that blocks of wood underneath to support it. This, this is pretty well self-aligning. So I'm using my cordless drill. Hopefully you can see that okay. And just go for it. All right, I'll do these other two, and then we'll have another look at it. Okay, <laughs> as a dry run, all the bolts go in fine. I did not put the bracket over here yet. I don't need to, but all the bolts go in fine. The only one I'm going to have any concern with, I think, is this one, because it may be just slightly taller than the other one that would have recessed into that hole. So the plan right now is I'm going to put all this together and I know I have to install this and the water pump all at the same time. But I'll put it all together and let everything cure, seal, you know, be dry. And if I do have an issue with this bolt, I can pull it out later and maybe trim it down a little bit if I need to. But otherwise, I think it's going to be fine. All right, I think I am ready to install this. Everything's cleaned up. Cleaned all the any kind of oil or anything off of the surfaces. I have this gasket, which is going to be between the main housing and the block. Over here, I have my bolts laid out. There's a specific set of bolts that are indicated here for the water pump section. I have the other bolts I'm going to use. I have one that's a little bit uh, left a little bit longer to where it attaches this bracket. And I have the bolts cleaned up for the oil pan. And what I plan to do at this point, I did do test fitting with this seal in place. I am going to take this seal back out, re-clean this, and put a little bit of the right stuff gasket maker on it and then everything else will get a coating of right stuff you know where the uh, gaskets are going to interface or interact and I'm going to bolt it together so I'm going to get this started I'll probably film this with the time-lapse camera or film the assembly with the time-lapse camera and then uh, go on from there
The instructions say torque to 20 foot pounds. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now I need to get the water pump on. Now instead of putting the sealant on the uh, front runner, I put it on the water pump, put the gasket on, put a coat of sealant on the perimeter. Seems awfully long. Unless it's there, it goes. There's one. There you go. That one's fine. And these other ones. Those two were four and a quarter inches, and then the drawing's not the greatest. I need one more over here. This says to torque these to 18 pounds. <laughs> Whew. All right, so in looking at these two bolts down here, this one that they had built a recess for, I'm assuming it's just so it didn't interfere with this lower hose. By the looks of it, that's the only thing that should be in the way. Once I get the pulley up here, I may be able to identify if it's, uh, I mean the balancer. I may be able to see if it's close or not. If it is, I'll make adjustments to that bolt. But as it is, I think it looks pretty good. Not quite done. I still have to put in the oil pan bolts. Let me see if I can get those in place. Now in this case, it's talking about 10 to 12 foot-pounds of torque. I think I can get there. That's a 10. 10 foot-pounds. Now the only other thing that I will do is add some more sealant in here. Maybe a little bit on this edge, I don't know yet. But I want to get more down in this area for sure. 
Want to make sure there's plenty of sealant. All right, so the water pump is installed, and then it says to install the um, harmonic balancer. And up here is a note, basically it says, install the balancer torque to 90 to 100 foot-pounds. Note, if using a Ford Motorsports balancer, see her instructions included with hardware kit 199002-HFA. Okay, so I went online, and I pulled up that kit and essentially it's showing this a different type of balancer and then you would need a motorsports damper spacer and it talks about this kit having the bolts and that spacer so this car does not have that <clears throat> it has this balancer so I'm going to install that and it does say 90 to 100 foot pounds. Okay, everything looks like it's in good shape until you try to slip this on. So I, I can try to line it up on the key, it's not really gonna matter. I try to get it on the shaft and guess what? It's not gonna go. Why you ask? Well, it's hitting the bracket, and it's also going to hit the water pump. What are the odds of that? How does that happen? I don't know if this isn't this this balancer isn't considered with this setup, but everything's lined up. All the bolts are in. Everything is where it needs to be. This bracket, it has that flange on this bolt, so it can only go in one spot. I could see maybe, maybe if I take this bolt loose, I could move this up just a little bit, but it's not going to be enough. The bigger concern is why, why is it going to hit the water pump? I don't know if you can see that very well. Let me try to zoom in here. But it's 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 right there. It would hit it would hit the water pump. Definitely would hit the water pump. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess this is a stop to this video. Not much else I can do at this point. So I don't know what, what the fix is. You know, I, I mentioned that other balancer. I don't know what we're going to have to come up with for uh, a different balancer because this is, you know, this engine is from Ford Motorsports and that balancer is part of this package. So, again, Things that make you go, hmm. <sighs> That's just the way it is. It's always that three steps forward, two steps back. But that's going to be the end of this video. I wanted to do more. I wanted to show you the fitting of the power steering pump, the AC compressor, the alternator, and have everything put together. But until I have that harmonic balancer issue resolved, uh, I'm not going to go any further and I want to point out that that balancer let me just grab it the balancer is about six and five eighths diameter the part number it says Ford Racing on it and Australia Australian produced the part number is M-6316 D 302. So I don't know if you can actually read that or not. If I get it just right, you might be able to read it. Okay. So apparently, you know, they make different sizes of these balancers. And 
maybe there's a recommendation from Vintage Air. I don't know. I know I did look up that uh, variant that they talked about. And anyway, yeah. So that'll be the end of this video. But there will be a part two to this once that harmonic balancer is resolved. And of course, I'll put on the other components. I don't want to wait and you know get this video out late. I want to try to get it out weekly if I can. So that'll be where this is at. So as I said in the last video, I asked for people to leave comments and give a thumbs up. And I would be doing a drawing for a prize. Now, again, as I stated, I can't give away you know a full toolbox full of tools or something like that. I'm, I can give away small items. Eventually, I might be able to give away some larger items, but at this point, I'm just kind of experimenting to see how this goes. You know, I'm trying to get growth on the channel. I'm trying to get more interest in the channel, and if doing giveaways helps, well, that's what I plan to do. Now, as I mentioned in that video, uh, I had a caption on the bottom that said, I cannot send stuff overseas anymore. The reason for that is I used to get a discount with my other job, my regular job. Since I'm retired, I don't get that discount anymore. So it is crazy expensive to send stuff to Australia or anywhere overseas. So I have to limit this to the States and probably, I guess Canada is probably not too bad to send stuff. So I'm sorry for that, but that's just the way it is. Unless, unless people want to you know, figure out a way to get stuff to, you know, a cheaper way to ship stuff, I don't, I don't know what else to do. So anyway, we're going to do a drawing, and again, based on the comments, from the previous video and if you want in on this week's video this one leave a comment thumbs up all that cool stuff and I will do a drawing again next week or on the next video so we'll see how this goes I'm experimenting can you blame me I hope not but let's take a look at the comments and the random picker that I have available okay so the way this is going to work is this is the video and I'll just make I'll just copy the URL. I'll point out that it shows 104 comments but some of them may be duplicate and it has 245 likes which is great. So I'll go to this comment picker put in the URL get YouTube comments amount of unique commenters 84 is what this says right here and then I click on start and winner is Wolf Thorn Hawkridge and did all of that come from Vintage Air looks like a complete front runner system so that is the winner Wolf Thorn Hawkridge. <laughs> so I'll, I'll make an announcement on the previous video and we'll go from there. Again, I don't know if where he's from. I'm assuming the states, at least I hope the states, and uh, we'll go from there. So, okay, so Wolf Thorn Hawkridge is the winner, and I will post an update on the comment that was made on the previous video. And we'll go from there, we'll go back and forth, maybe with a, some email information or something, and try to get things taken care of. So, I want to thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, thank you for the comments, all the things that are helping to make this channel grow, and hopefully continue to grow. And uh, that's going to be it. So, until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. <laughs> that. I'm going to set the distributor back in. I know you can't see where I'm pointing. All right, so as I was saying, to put that front runner... So now I want to take off this pulley. I'm sorry. That's wrong. You know, and the lobe here, sorry, the wheel on uh, here.
trying not to let it rotate, but I'm going to try to clamp it a little differently. Post. I think my battery's dead. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> That's going to be the end of this video.